Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Since it's Halloween, I'm going to give you a ranking of an old horror franchise, one of the most popular, A Nightmare on Elm Street. There have been nine movies in this franchise, including spin-off with Friday the 13th, Jason Voorhees, and also a 2010 remake. I'm gonna go through all of them, starting from the worst, making my way all the way up to the best, and I'll give you a short insight on what I think of them. Just to say, there may be slight spoilers in here, so consider that your warning. Quick disclaimer, as I've started filming this, I've already noticed about the wonky picture right here, so I'm not gonna interrupt my recording to mute it now, just you have to sit through the pain, and I'm sorry if bringing it to your attention has made it a bit worse for you, but anyway, onto the video. Coming in at last and ninth place, we have Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. If you look at many other people's rankings and they agree with me on this one, this is a truly awful movie. By this point, there is not one bit which is scary. I can barely consider it a horror movie if it wasn't for all the graphic content in it. It's just very laughable. Everything's really ridiculous, over the top and campy. You can pick out these moments from this movie and just laugh at them and enjoy the movie just because those bits are funny and intentionally campy but Freddy Krueger is one of the most iconic horror characters of all time so seeing him sit down play video games ruins kind of his image and what we have seen from him these past few years. You know Freddy's always had a bit of humour to him but the way he acts this feels like a comedy he does not feel natural. He feels like he's starring in his own comedy that he's well aware of. In fact, it feels like he stars in one of the scary movie films. And I don't mean a scary movie, I mean the parody franchise scary movie, which is not a good comparison to make. The plot itself is very ridiculous. You know, it's in the title, Freddy's Dead. They try and kill Freddy, trying to bring Freddy back to life. Even though in this whole series, even from the first movie, it's already established that he is dead and they kill him off every time. Such a very stupid plotline, very stupid concept to mark a very stupid movie. You know, for all the lows they've had in this series up to then, I didn't think anything could be worse, but somehow they managed it. Coming in at eighth place, we have A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Dream Child. I'll give it credit, this movie had the ideas to make something very different. You know, it tried to go in a completely different way, it didn't just use the same format from every movie. Unfortunately, it's still a complete mess. It was a mess to the point where it actually completely lost me and I had no idea what was going on. In horror movies, especially this type, you do not want that as they're meant to be an easy watch, but it hurt my head a lot. It contained a lot of gross scenes. That might be your sort of thing. For me, I'm fine with it, but sometimes over the top grossness doesn't appeal to everyone. Although this movie does still have some of its unique kills, including one which is on a motorcycle. However, if you pluck this movie out of existence and you left the gap where this movie had been in this franchise, you're not going to notice a real difference to how the franchise is overall, to be honest. Coming in at 7th place, we have A Nightmare on Elm Street for The Dream Master. This is where the franchise really started to get bad. A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, it wasn't great but then it quickly bounced back with a nightmare on elm street 3 this one you could really feel like it was descending into awful territory as this one was a really bad movie following the success of the previous movie they just go straight away and kill off these characters that we actually that we learned to like you know no one ever really likes to see that happen most noticeably what i can think of is newt being killed off in alien 3 and to replace those characters who were actually interesting who we knew who we had learned about they just bring in really uninteresting characters just so they can kill them off again. The plot itself is very cliche, it's just another rehash, nothing new, it's all very familiar. So that makes for yet another bad and forgettable A Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Coming in at sixth place we have A Nightmare on Elm Street 2 Freddy's Revenge. For a sequel to a very popular horror movie at that time, especially being released one year after the first one I had. This was quite a huge disappointment. You know, in hindsight, as it's sixth in this list, it's not as bad as what has come in this franchise later on. In fact, it's a lot better than Freddy's Dead. So I'm not going to say consider yourself lucky, but it's, it wasn't a good start to the sequels of this popular character. Although there is still quite a bit of fun to be had. This is where we saw 
Freddy Krueger. It became quite a bit campy in this movie, but it was a lot of fun to see. The characters and the movie's energy was kind of contagious, and you couldn't help but enjoy it. You know, some of these have been painful to sit through, but this one really wasn't. It was quite enjoyable. However, the plot is quite silly about how Freddy can overtake someone's body and that person turns into Freddy. You can tell it's bad since it hasn't been used in any other movies, but that's where it's weird. Freddy gets all these powers that we didn't know he had. So, so we're thinking, oh, maybe, maybe he's just showing us new things that we didn't get to see in the first one, but they're not reused throughout the series. So, you know, they tried something and it didn't work, but somehow there are a lot worse movies that came after this one. Coming in at fifth place, we have A Nightmare on Elm Street, the 2010 remake. I actually think I actually think this is a very disrespected movie. I think it's the creepiest out of all of them. I mean, it kind of makes sense. All of them have been a bit campy, but this is a very dark and gritty version, which I actually like. I found it scarier. The scares in the original movies had been quite updated. There were actually some genuine scares in this, which actually had you holding your breath if you get what I mean. Jackie L. Haley was a great casting choice for this darker version of Freddy. You know, you know Freddy, he likes to taunt his enemies. So does Haley's version of Freddy, but his is a lot darker. I like how different he is to Robert England's Freddy. I personally find him more intimidating because he feels more realistic, I guess you could say more grounded, a lot more creepier, as they kind of change up that he isn't a child murderer which yes it makes him seem darker but it seemed a bit unnecessary visually i thought it was very well done it looked very fresh very modern that's what you wanted to see from this remake although i did still have some issues with it mainly the plot there's this whole plot about whether freddy was actually innocent and killed in cold blood but us who know for around 35 years i guess you have to take it back into account then 25 years or so back then everyone knew Freddy was very evil, so to actually have that plotline in it was quite embarrassing, you could say, because we know Freddy is evil, and if he wasn't evil, then there would be some major backlash, so it was very irrelevant, very pointless. A really pointless plotline in somewhat of a solid remake, in my opinion. Now, it's not near the quality of the first one, but I still had a good time enjoying it. It did scare me probably the most out of any movie on this list. Coming in at fourth place, we have... Freddy vs Jason. This is perhaps the most fun on this list. Plot may not be that creative, it may not even make much sense, but as long as we got to see Freddy and Jason battle it out, I can look past those bad plot lines. Both characters have such different fighting styles, you know, Freddy attacks you in your dreams, he's more outsmarting you, he, he kind of has an unfair advantage because everyone's vulnerable in their dreams. Whereas Jason is just the unstoppable brute, so seeing these two fight with their own styles is very fun to see, very cool to see, something they had to do at least once, so I'm glad they did that. What I found interesting is, as I mentioned, Jason is an absolute brute, whereas in comparison to size, Freddy is quite skinny, quite smaller, so the fact that he has that advantage of going into Jason's dreams, I found it, like, it's actually an even fight and that's what makes it interesting because you don't actually know who will win. Fight scenes are over the top and absolutely ridiculous, there's a lot of violence, you know, which was a lot of fun to see. It's nowhere near a masterpiece, it's nowhere near a horror masterpiece, as it was mainly focused on bringing these two horror icons together. I appreciate it wasn't drowned out by the story. The story wasn't good, but that didn't distract from the fun that was there to have on screen, which we did with these two greats. So I found this a very fun watch. Coming in at third place, we have A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors. This is how you make a good horror sequel. You leave behind mostly what was established in the first movie and you take it into a new environment, new characters, and you do some new things. They tried to do some new things with the second one, but they were absolutely ridiculous. Whereas in this one, they took it to new places, had some new kills, some new characters who were actually interesting. And it introduces this cool concept which we hadn't known before, you can go into other people's dreams together with them. That was used throughout the whole of the franchise, so you know what was done properly, and they did everything they could in this film to keep this franchise alive, and my god, did they do it. In no way did they rehash it, and in no way, once again, is this a masterpiece. It is just a very solid horror movie sequel, which you don't see too much. Coming in at second place is 
the new nightmare or if you want to call it Wes Craven's new nightmare this was the one I finished watching this morning before filming this this is just a super fresh and unique movie not just for the a Nightmare on Elm Street series for the horror genre in general it's very similar to Scream in some sense how it's talking about its own franchise how it's pretty much in a world where we are in where the actors who play Freddy Krueger and Nancy they're involved with this as well as themselves so we see Robert England play Robert England we see Heather Langenkamp play herself again and she to be fair she actually gives her best performance in any of these series in fact when she's playing herself not the character she was originally cast as. I also love that they actually included Wes Craven into this movie. If you didn't know, Wes Craven is the director of this movie. He also directed the first the Nightmare on Elm Street movie, so it was just fun to have him mixed in. And they're actually talking about this movie being made in this movie. It, if you think about it too much, it's really confusing, but I found it very clever. You didn't really need to think about it too much. You got the gist of it. It made Freddy feel more real. He wasn't in it too much, but when he was, it was effective. You could argue in the end that some bits got a bit messy, and I can agree with that, but still, a nice, fresh direction they took this franchise in. But as many have predicted and many agree on, coming in at first place, we have the original A Nightmare on Elm Street. The original is just easily the best, just like in many cases of many films. It introduces us to this really, and I mean really interesting concept of being tormented in your dreams by this villain Freddy Krueger, this dead child murderer. The reason for me that I found it was executed so well is because everyone has to sleep. The body needs rest. You can't just stay awake and not have to encounter Freddy Krueger, whereas like Friday the 13th, you can just, even though it's hard, you can just run away, I guess. But in this movie, everyone has to sleep, so you're gonna have to face him sooner or later. When you drink coffee or medicine to stay awake, you're just delaying the inevitable. And as long as that goes on, you can see them exhausted, you can feel that as well. It's just such a clever story, and you know, watching through it, you're just like, oh, are they gonna end up defeating him in classic way, an easy kill off? But no, as the story unfolds, you find out really interesting things, important things, which you learn new as the characters learn new. And when the time comes when he is defeated, you're actually satisfied because it wasn't just done in the easiest way possible to end the movie abruptly. There are some special and practical effects which look very outdated. Ones that come to mind are Freddy Krueger's stunt double when he's actually on fire. He does not look like Robert England at all and also at the end with Nancy's mum you watch it and you'll you'll know what I mean but nonetheless don't that doesn't take anything away from what this movie is I've said in this ranking about a few movies that oh that movie by far is not a masterpiece but this movie it very much is a masterpiece so there is my ranking of the a nightmare on Elm Street franchise I'm going to chuck up my ratings on screen now if you didn't see them when I was talking about them originally also you can see them side by side please let me know in the comments what your list would be in the coming weeks I'll actually have another franchise ranking from the horror genre and that will be released on Friday the 13th of November so I don't think I have to say what franchise that would be you should make of that what you will but anyways Thank you for watching, I hope I see you around for that one, and take care.